So Warner Brothers was associated with a film that was significantly changed after the original filmmaker left the project, and there are now two completely different cuts released years apart. Sound familiar? No, I'm not referring to Justice League. Payback is a film, or in this case, now films, that are two predominantly different movies with the same narrative, including polar opposite aesthetics to the color grading and tonally dissimilar soundtracks to remind us which one we're watching. But most of all, containing separately shot third acts that change the trajectory of the story's conclusion. That Payback became dual experiences has brought it to a special cinematic pedigree. Yeah. Not even Project Greenlight or Chris Moore's The Chair could have orchestrated this. Much of what's intriguing about Payback is how it was made. The original writer and director, Brian Helgeland, was given his first shot as a director by Mel Gibson. He said, oh, I read the script, and I said, yeah, and then he said, well, can you be ready to shoot in 12 weeks? Which is the first thing, he didn't say, I like it, he, didn't, he just said, can you be ready to shoot in 12 weeks? And having no idea, I said, yeah, I can be, re I can be ready to shoot in 12 weeks. After filming wrapped, the test screenings for the studio they had planned to sell the movie to were not going well. Citing things such as the killing of the dog, deaths of characters done in cold blood, the beating Porter gives to his wife, and the gritty, ambiguous ending as the numerous reasons for the poor test screening reactions. To make the film more accessible for a 90s audience, the studio told Helglin they wanted a version that was more audience-friendly. But Helglin said he could not find a way to write and reshoot another version. He departed from the project. We just decided to write a third act, and uh, I just thought it would work better this way for now. There have been conflicting reports online as to who it was who entered the director's chair once Helgeland left. But finally, these misunderstandings can now be put to rest after Gibson's representative confirmed with me that it was Paul Abascal who did the reshoots. During the making of this synthesis, I reached out to Abascal himself, and he detailed the making of Payback after Helgeland's departure, which has not been publicly known until now. Terry Hayes was the one who authored the rewrites. Gibson then called Abascal, whom he had a long working relationship with beforehand, offered him the chance to direct 15 days of reshoots for an entirely new third act, with a far more elaborate and playful tone. Once finished, Abascal turned down a co-directing credit out of respect for Helgeland and to avoid more controversy, a move not often seen in Hollywood. Helgeland's originally intended vision of the film lay unfinished and unseen by the public. That is, until years later, Icon and Paramount gave Helgeland the chance to restore his vision after he simply asked if he could. Helgeland has always exuded an underdog quality in the ranks of Hollywood to me. Having been a part of such films as LA Confidential and A Knight's Tale, he doesn't stick to the same kind of film over and over again. He's diverse in his tastes, and that is a valuable trait for a filmmaker being able to adapt and traverse different genres. Where one of his films is a serious drama, he's then able to move over to a fun medieval jousting romp. You can see the love for what he does during interviews, exuding a childlike love for filmmaking. One night Dick called me after I had been at it for a couple of weeks, and he's like, How, how's it going? I just stopped and I go, Dick, I go, this, it's the greatest job on the face of the earth. He goes, but don't tell anybody. He goes, don't tell him. Just keep telling everyone you're tired and you're miserable because you, you don't want this getting out. Now, with a chance to restore his version, he opted to differentiate the two cuts by making his version warmer with more contrast and sharper details. It was an intelligent move on his part so that it would make the separation between the two more apparent. Admittedly, the ending of the theatrical version is bigger and more fast-paced versus the director's cut, which is more vague with a semi-downbeat ending that leaves the audience with nothing more than a wonder of whether Porter died on his way to a back alley doctor to help with his gunshot wounds. This being in the style of a hard-boiled crime story with an all-of-a-sudden conclusion. So which is better? In the case of Payback and its two versions, it's not an apropos question. Neither are bad. Where you have one that has elements and tones that are Ocean's Eleven-esque, the director's cut is gritty and stark, especially when you see the controversial exchange where Porter beats his wife. But it's not gratuitous. You soon after find out he does that because she double-crossed him. There is a through line with each version of the story. Porter, 
he is headstrong. He doesn't want any more money than what was stolen from him, which is a frustrating point he keeps trying to tell the other characters. Frankly, I don't understand it for $130,000. And it's only 70. His share. 70? 70 grand. That's even worse. What do you mean it's only 70? It's only 70,000? It's all there, 130 grand. 70, it's not faster. That's what they took from me. There's a man in my office with a gun who says he's gonna kill me if the outfit doesn't pay him $130,000. 70,000. Seven, it's 70. And that's what I was gonna get back. Hell, my suits are worth more than that. All he's doing is sticking to his principles, even if the majority tells him something else. Similar to how the budget for the film was reported to be 90 million, when in actuality, it was 20. A number thankfully Abascal has corrected. You got it. It's enjoyable to see both versions back to back. Not just for a cinephile film study, but also for an average viewer. The fate that befell Payback gives us a glimpse into the what if scenario of life. What if we had chosen a different path? What if we had met different people? What if our choices were more instinctual rather than analytical? It's an accidental choose your own adventure film that even Hollywood couldn't have planned better themselves. Much thanks to publicist Alan Nyrob and director Paul Abascal for their participation in the cinephesis.